این بیماری من ازش اطلاع پیدا کردم در سال 1977 ولی از 74 کم کم شروع شده بود خب اینو خیلی میگن که آیا در تصمیم گیری ایشون اثر داشت این بیماری ولی دکترها بعد گفتن که نه اون دوایی که ایشون میخوردن نمیتونست اثر داشته باشه در تصمیم گیریشون Faced with an ailing monarch and a regime under pressure, Iran's privileged officer class began to get nervous. Now imagine this. Every day, guys in uniform, full dress uniform, would come into the office. They were all part of the army, or the navy, or the air force. And they all wanted their children out of the country. Why? So they don't have to do military service. You're a professional military. I don't want my son to do it. The whole thing is crazy. It's gonna, you know, it's not good. I don't want my son in the army. I want them out. I want them in the United States. As the monthly protests continued, the Shah tried a change of prime minister, putting one of his most loyal allies, Jafar Sharif Imami, in charge. Sharif Imami had always had good relations with Iran's religious leaders. He promised a government of national reconciliation and closed down a number of casinos and nightclubs. But to no avail, the demonstrations continued. On the 8th of September 1978, martial law was announced in Tehran and 11 other cities. On the same day, hundreds of demonstrators took to the streets in South Tehran. The army moved in and opened fire on the protesters. Jali's square became a bloodbath. The official death toll was 58, but rumors took hold that the army had massacred thousands of people there. September the 8th became known as Black Friday. This mosque was the scene of one of the worst riots in Tehran in the past few days as a hundred or so demonstrators spilled out of it and came up against the security forces. During the trouble, I saw the police beating passers-by indiscriminately with their sticks, but otherwise only tear gas was used, and it seemed clear that the police were under orders to disperse the demonstrators, but not to shoot at them or to injure them seriously. The notorious secret police force, Sadak, is no longer in charge of riot control, and the Shah's aim seems to be to contain the trouble in the streets rather than smash it violently. The switch in tactics was the first of many. As the pressure mounted on the Shah, he began to offer concessions. Does political liberalization mean that you are ready to reduce your own role strictly to that of a constitutional monarch? Uh, yes, surely. A constitutional monarch according to our constitution, obviously. But despite the concessions, many around the Shah felt he was in denial about the threat Ayatollah Khomeini and his followers now posed to his regime. It was a subject none of them felt they could broach. One of his commanders was so concerned, he decided to ask the Israeli foreign minister, Moshe Dayan, to spell out the danger in plain terms to the Shah. Itzhak Segev was the go-between. The commander of the Imperial Iranian Air Force, Rabi, used to be my good friend. He visited to me Israel, and I met him in Iran. One day, he asked to meet me, and I came to meet him, and he told me, listen, you are a good friend of uh, General Dayan, Please invite General Dayan to Iran. I told him, okay, please tell me what to tell Dayan. So he told me, I want Dayan to explain to Shah what happened in the streets in Tehran. So I told him, General Rabi, you are telling me that you are the one coming and going to the Shah. First, you mean it was 12 chairs uh, outside of the uh, palace. The first chair used to be commander of Air Force. So he told me, listen, I thought you know something. I'm coming to him. He's sitting in a high chair. And I only words that I can tell him, yes, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. He never can give any criticize or any uh, offer. So actually, when Diane came, uh, Diane spoke to the Shah. 
face to face. You mean three eyes meeting. But uh, it was a late. In the middle of all of this, a new arrival at the Israeli embassy in Tehran had a visit from the Shah's secret police. When you dash be כמעט בראשית בואי לאיראן, פנו אליי מהסווק ושאלו אותי לדעתי אם צריך לדרוש מהעיראקים, מסדאם חוסיין, לגרש את חומני מעיראק. כי הוא מסית קשה מאוד. והתנצלתי ואמרתי שלנו אסור שתהיה דעה בנושא הזה. העניין הפנימי שלהם, יחליטו ויעשו מה שהם רוצים. Eventually, the Shah's government did ask Saddam Hussein to expel Ayatollah Khomeini from Iraq. His next destination was the French capital, Paris. France is a place where we want to go to the United States. We went to England very early because they said that the relationship between the British and the English and the other things. The Germans didn't want a visa, but the Germans didn't have a political government. روم هم همینطور بود در بین کشور اروپایی پاریس ایدئال بود ایرانی ها ویزا نمیخواستن بنابراین ما بعد هم یه کلونی از ایرانی های فعال اونجا وجود داشت که میتونست کمک باشه اون که من آقای خمینه بهش کنم باید بریم پاریس و اونجا شما امکان پیدا میکنید که این پیام رو به تمام دنیا بدید Within a short time Ayatollah Khomeini's small villa in the Parisian suburb of Neuf le Chateau had become a magnet for the world's press. The French locals are still wondering what's hit them. Along the roadside, bearded mullahs embrace each other, many of them coming here to pay their respects from their own places of exile. You are reported to be so bitterly opposed to the Shah that you would accept nothing less than his abdication and exile. But if the Shah were to democratize the country as he has promised, would you not accept him as a purely constitutional monarch? There can be no question of compromise in view of our opposition and the opposition of the people of Iran to the Shah. With the experiences we have had of this Shah and this dynasty and the treachery against our people and all sections of the society, towards both the religious and political sections. This leaves no room for compromise. With the present Shah out of the way, he has a vision of Iran as an Islamic Republic. According to the Ayatollah's supporters, that means a truly democratic society with universal suffrage. According to the skeptics, it means imposing a religious straitjacket on the country and turning the clock back a thousand years. Abbas Abdi had become a follower of Ayatollah Khomeini several years earlier. He represented a generation of young Iranians who despised the Shah and his autocratic regime. To them, the Ayatollah offered real hope of change. درست میشه چون اون آدم های خوبی انتخاب میکنه حتما انقدر ادالت داره عقل داره مثلا علم داره درست عمل میکنه تقوا داره خیانت نمیکنه شجاعت هم داره که با مسیر خودش رو میره جلو اما معلوم شد که اینا اساسا همش یه ذهنیات بسیار نپخته ای هستش که محصول یه نظام استبدادیه توی نظام بسته آدم بچنین ذهنیت هایی میرسه ولی های نظام باز باشه دلیلی نداره که آدم این نوع ذهنیت غلطی رو بپذیره و فکر کنه که با رفتن و اومدن یه نفر مثلا مملکتی اتفاق عجیبی جوش رو خواهد از در مومنتم بیهند هم بگن تگرو آیتولا خمینیز تیم در پاریس ستارتد تا کوردنیت در سترکس و انتی شاه دمنسترشنز اکراس ایران the emphasis was on forceful but peaceful protest. The Ayatollah reportedly thought armed struggle would be futile. Our Khomeini was in the middle of a conflict. He had a belief that if we are in the middle of a conflict, the political groups of the Ayatollah have a government, they have a government, 
میتوانند جریان رو کنترل بکنن ما اونو نداریم پس آقای خمینی معتقد به یک نوعی که امروزا این روزا میگن انقلاب مخملی به یک نوعی انقلاب نارنجی یا مخملی یعنی به آوردن همه توده های مردم با اهرام توده ها نظام رو به عقب نشینی بادار کردن and popular resistance was what he was beginning to achieve after the killings in Jale Square, the army had stopped shooting demonstrators, but on the 4th of November, soldiers once again opened fire, this time on students at Tehran University. Dozens were reported to have been killed. Another crisis, another prime minister.